Hey there guys. I um, wanted to show you my latest do-it-yourself caving helmet. This is my second version. The first version I had used a uh, smaller trail bike light that had four uh, LEDs that put out 1500 lumens. Uh, this headlamp is a little bit bigger and puts out 3000 lumen. So quite a big difference. Uh, this headlamp is called uh, KD Light BL70S and I purchased off a website in China and it was only 40 bucks which is a pretty good deal. So this light comes in a variety of different color temperatures. I bought two of them because I didn't know which color temperature I would prefer. Uh, the first one is uh, 6500 Kelvin which is kind of a white color and the other is 5000 Kelvin which is sort of a warmer color. Um, which color is better? It's, I think it's personal preference, but I think I'm leaning toward for caving a 5000 Kelvin color temperature because I think caves look better uh, in that type of light. So let's take a look at this light. It's an aluminum casing with black oxide. Uh, it has a, a bike light mount which we are going to remove for my caving application. When you look at the reflector in here, it has a nice deep reflector, which will give throw versus if it was a shallow reflector, it would, it would be more of a floodlight. And it also has a orange peel reflector, which means that you're gonna get a smooth beam pattern. On the back of the light, you have uh, the power button and you have three different power levels and also a strobe. On low, it puts out 300 lumens on medium it puts out 90 or 900 lumen and on high is 3000 lumen this button will also change color uh, based on your battery capacity so when you first start out it will be green and then when your battery starts getting low it will change to red so the runtime on this light um, for low it's at least eight hours. It's probably longer than that, but I just got tired of waiting for the light to turn off. On medium, which is 900 lumen, it'll run for two hours. And on high, 3000 lumen, it'll run for uh, 30 minutes. And that's using a battery pack like this, which is a two cell uh, 18650. Uh, 7.4 volt, 3,500 milliamp hours. So if you want more runtime, you can just pack an extra battery pack like this, or they do make four cell battery packs, which would be too big to put on the back of a helmet, but you could put that in a, a backpack or a hydration pack, and then you just run uh, a cable from the battery to the, the, the light which is not a big deal. I've done that before in the past. So let's talk about the helmet balance. The, the light head weighs a, a little over 180 grams and the battery is around 160 grams. So it's pretty balanced. You're not gonna have uh, a sensation where the helmet keeps trying to tilt forward. I think the weight balance is pretty close enough where it's gonna sit flat on your head. So for the, the cost of this helmet, uh, you have around 38 bucks for the helmet light. Uh, for the battery, you can buy these for less than uh, $23. You have some uh, 3M dual lock Velcro here to hold the battery onto the back of the helmet. Uh, you also have some cable management clips that go around the helmet, which we'll take a look at closer. A little bit later and then you have some uh, GoPro components you have an adhesive amount the clip that fits into there and then the extension arm uh, that connects the uh, helmet lamp uh, to the helmet so overall it's cost less than $70 assuming you already have the helmet for this uh, configuration so if you look at commercial lighting systems from Lupin or Knight Rider for a comparable 3,000, 3,500 lumen system, 
you're going to pay 600 to 650 bucks, which is quite a big difference. So let's take a look at how this thing is put together. And we'll start with the back. So we have the battery mounted to the back of the helmet. And we're using some 3M dual lock uh, Velcro to hold the battery to the helmet. Uh, this type of Velcro is much stronger than your typical plastic fabric Velcro. So it does a pretty good job holding the battery to the helmet. Now in some instances when I've been caving, I've hit the battery against the ceiling of a cave and knocked it loose. So what I tried to uh, handle that problem was I went to zip ties as a secondary system to hold the battery to the helmet, which works pretty good. Uh, the only thing about that is you have to carry a knife or some small scissors to cut the zip ties off when you want to change batteries. So I just recently changed over to these uh, silicon type uh, cable management systems so that I don't need to carry a knife or a scissor. Um, it just slips right into a notch and you can tighten it down. So beside, so I've got Velcro and these silicon straps to hold the battery to the helmet, which works out pretty cool. And then uh, these cable clips do a pretty good job on holding the cable to the helmet so they don't snag on anything. Um, they're very small profile and they do a pretty good job. Now the, the helmet light comes with a pretty long cable so I've, I've tried to figure out what I can do with some of the excess. So what I did was I, I stuck um, some of the excess cable on the inside of the helmet which really uh, you can't feel it and I've got it connected or held down to the helmet with another clip. So that does a, a pretty nice job with uh, making the cable system look pretty nice. And then on the front I'm using a curved 3M adhesive mount a clip that snaps into that. And then an extension arm that I've had to uh, modify. So I've removed the bicycle mount here that went into the to the light this thing here and then I bought a four millimeter screw from Lowe's and uh, used that to attach the bracket to the light. <clears throat> so the the short GoPro mount you're gonna have to do some modifications to it to make it work. So the one this part uh, that has the screw you have to dremel it off and then if you have a spare, if you have a, another spare extension arm or something that has a GoPro tab, I usually cut that tab off and stick it in here to get rid of the space so it's, you know, when you're screwing it to the, uh, to the light, there's no gap there. And then, um, so this, this part goes up into the, the light and then I, you have to, uh, I used a soldering gun to sort of melt a channel in here for the cable uh, coming out of the light to go into the channel so it'll sit flush uh, so it'll sit flush on the mount so at the end of this video I'm going to show you pictures of the components and where I bought them so thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed it and we'll talk at you later